Hello friends. In this video, we will be discussing about the concept of two-dimensional array in C language. So, first of all, what you mean by two-dimensional array and what is the use of it? So, basically, this two-dimensional array can be used to work upon matrix type of structure. Matrix type of structure in simpler way, if you want to write or if you want to demonstrate, then we can say that suppose we need to store data in the tabular type of format for example here you can see this is a table and each cell can able to store some value so there are total nine cells okay so there are total nine cells now if we can see this is row number zero this is row number one and this is row number two this is column number zero column number one and column number two. So this type of structure can be considered as two dimensional array or to, it can be worked upon. We can able to work upon this type of structure using the concept of two dimensional. Two dimensional means we have rows, we have columns. In single dimensional array, the architecture is somewhat like this, okay, in which we have only rows. And column is always one, always one column is there and row are like row number zero, row number one, row number two, row number three. So this is one dimensional array. But in the case of two dimensional arrays, we have more than one rows, more than one column. So this structure can be known as three cross three matrix means that there are three rows, there are three columns. So whenever we have this type of architecture or we need to work with this type of requirements, we need to go for two dimensional array. Okay, so now we can see that the structure, how to declare two dimensional array. So first of all, the data type, then the name of the array and since two dimensions, one is for row, one is per column like how many rows you want so based on that the value of row size will be given how many values or how many columns you want based on that this column size will be given so here the example is integer a of 2 3 it means that in this particular architecture there will be two rows and three columns so if we try to plot this particular array, we can see that there will be two rows and there will be three columns. So this is row number zero, this is row number one, this is column zero, this is column one and this is column two. Now if we talk about this particular cell, so this is the combination or intersection of row number zero and column zero. So that can be represented as zero zero. Then this is row number 0 column 1 so we can say 0 1 this is row number 0 column 2 so this is 0 2 in this case this is row number 1 so row number 1 column number 0 this is row number 1 column number 1 this is row number 1 column number 2 so this particular two dimensional array can be plotted like this so this is two row three column architecture but if we look at the memory, so memory will not be like tabular form, like this matrix form that will be in the same pattern that we have seen in the one dimensional array means what it will be there in the uniform single dimension that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is 0, 0, then 0, 1 then 0, 2, then 1, 0, then 1, 1 and 1, 2 like this. So the it is row major. It is known as row major. Row major means what? All the elements of one row will come first and then the second row. Okay. So here you can see that this is row number 0, column number 1, row number 0, column number 2, row number 0, column number 3. So all the elements of row number 1 will come first. Then all the elements of row number 2 will come next. And the memory location or we can say address is like this. Since this con 
this is of integer type it will occupy two bytes so starting from 1010 it is 1012 1014 and likewise but graphical presentation will be like this in simpler form we can see it as a matrix type structure it is two cross three matrix okay and we have seen that array index always starts from 0 so row 0 column 0 so it, you can see this is a of 0 0 and it should be size minus 1 so there are the size is 2 the 2 minus 1 is 1 size is 3 3 minus 1 is 2 so the maximum the latest or we can say uh, the last element will be presented as a 1 2 so here we can see it is a 1 2 okay so this is how we can declare an array now we try to look at one of the example how we can work upon this particular architecture so suppose we need to make the sum of elements sum of array elements okay sum of array elements so we have declared one array integer a of 2 3 means there will be two rows there will be three columns okay i and j now see during the concept of pattern we have seen that whenever we have row column type of architecture this is row column type of architecture so we need to go for two for loops or two any loop we can take but that should be two one is for row second is for column okay so here also we'll be having the same sort of things the first for loop this is for row so that i will be indexed starts from zero so that i will be zero then i will be less than the size of row the row size is 2 means so we have written i less than 2 and i plus plus then the inner for loop is for column okay inner for loop is for column so in inner for loop j is 0 j less than 3 why 3 because maximum columns are 3 so j less than 3 and j plus plus and in place of writing only a of i this particular cell is what it is the intersection of this particular row and this particular column so this is row number 0 this is column number 0 so this particular cell is known as 0 0 cell in our terms so this row is identified by i variable column is identified by j variable so we have written a of row number and column number so a of i j so this will be row and this will be column so scan a percentage d m percent a of i j now since we are going to make the sum of an array element so we have written sum equals to sum plus a of i j now this loop will be executed for how many times six times why six times because the inner loop will execute three times and outer loop will execute two times so 2 3 are 6 so six different values will be scanned and finally we can get the output on the screen now we try to debug this code now here we write i equals to 0 j equals to 0 so i equals to 0 condition is true we come inside j equals to 0 condition is true so a of i j right now i is 0 j is 0 so that is a of 0 0 so the value will be stored in a of 0 0 then suppose we have entered okay we have entered here 1 so now sum will become what 1 now j will be incremented because from here we will go here so j will be incremented so j will become now 1 so now it is 0 1 so 0 1 means this we are entering 2 here so sum will become 3 now i will be sorry j will be 2 so now i is still 0 j is 2 so it is the next element 0 2 suppose i am entering the value of that is 3 so now because sum becomes 6 now j will be what j will be 3 so j will be 3 but this condition 3 less than 3 condition becomes false so we can jump out of this loop and again from here we will be moving to i plus plus so now i will become 1 we move inside again the value of j will be initialized to 
So now j is 0 again, but here i is 1. i is 1 and j is 0. It means that a of i j, so i is 1 and j is 0. So it is a of 1, 0. So it will be pointing to this location. Suppose I am entering 4, so answer sum will be 10. Now j will be incremented, now j becomes 1. So i is 1, j is 1, so it is 1, 1. So this location, suppose 5, so it is now 15. Now j becomes 2, sum is, uh, sorry, i is 1 and j is 2. So it is 1, 2, I have entered 6, that becomes 21. Now j becomes 3, 3 less than 3 condition false, it will be coming out of the inner for loop. Then here again we increment the value of i, now i becomes 2 and the condition 2 less than 2 becomes false, so directly we will be Jump, jumping out of the outer loop and that is printf sum and the value of sum is 21. So 21 will be printed on the screen. So by using this way, we have scanned the value of two rows, three columns or we can say we have scanned total six values and we have made the sum of it. Okay. So this is how we can work with two dimensional array. Now, if you want to print the value, so the format remains same, the format remains the same because i equals to 0, i less than equals to 2, i plus plus, j equals to 0, j less than equals, j less than 3, j plus plus in place of scanf, what we will be writing? We will be writing printf percentage d a of i and j. Only this is the difference. Okay. Or if you want to uh, manipulate or if you want to use the cell value or the value of two dimensional array. So again, the format of two for loop remains same. Whatever you need to write that can be returned within this particular inner for loop. So that will be applicable for each cell that will be applicable for each cell. So I hope you understood this concept. If you have any doubt regarding this, you can write your queries on 6 at the rate gmail.com. Thank you for watching the video.